Hello, beautiful. Welcome to day four of the Rock Your Closet Challenge. I'm so excited to have you here. Now, the Rock Your Closet Challenge is going on June 6th through 12th, 2022. And if you're not already registered, do so at the link within this video description, or you can head over to SusannaK.com and just click on the banner at the top. That way you can get the challenge checklist and repeat this challenge anytime you want after it's all done. But this week, during the challenge, uh, each day, you get a couple small tasks, little small steps towards organizing your closet. And each day we have a video. Today happens to be live. So let me quickly, before we go on to talking about containers and storage options, which you'll see I've got some stuff to talk about behind me here and show you. I wanted to say hi really quickly. Hi, Karen. And we see Wendy's here. Welcome, Wendy and Terry. And Janet, great to see all of you. As you hop on, let me know who you are, where you're joining me from. All right, so today we are talking about containers and storage, specifically for the closet, but a lot of these concepts are going to apply everywhere else as well. So I'm excited to share all of this with you. All right, hey, Sue, great to see you. I'm glad that you hopped on today. So when we're talking about storage, especially in a closet, storage can mean so many different things. Generally, we talk about containers, right? So how do you choose the right containers for your space? Well, let's talk about some of the key concepts for figuring out what containers are going to work right for you. And I'll show you some examples. All of these are examples from my own home. So these are ones that obviously I recommend because I use them myself. If you do at any point want to find out more information about any of the products that I mentioned, most of these are going to be in the My Favorite Things store. So you can go to SusannaK.com and click on store. It's going to be in the My Favorite Things section. And you can just check out. You don't have to buy anything through that link. If you wanted to, you can. But you can check out more details about each of these products that I talk about. All right. So, hey, Joanne, great to see you hopping in here. So the first thing, when you're thinking about choosing storage, the reason I don't have you purchase storage containers and check your storage containers at the beginning of the Rock Your Closet Challenge is because it's best to purge uh, as much as you can first because you want to make sure that you know how many items you're actually needing to store. What size does that take up? What's the uh, area of storage that you're going to need? And if you do this before you've gone through and purged an area, then most likely you're not going to choose containers that are right sized. So you always want to pull out your items and purge them first. And I usually group my items by category so I can physically see the size of the container that I will need. So in a closet, for example, if you wanted to store your scarves in a container, Group all of the scarves together, go through, purge the ones that you don't want anymore. And the remaining scarves, you can look at them and see that's how much storage space you need. And you can choose the appropriate container accordingly. So we want to choose our containers based on the size of the items. So you want to measure. Uh, you can either eyeball it if you're really good at that or grab a measuring tape and measure the items that you need to store. How much space will those need to take up? When you do that, consider, do you want to add more items to that uh, category? So maybe you got rid of a lot of scarves because they weren't serving you anymore, but you want to add more to the collection, then make sure to include that extra space when you choose your uh, storage bin. Now, most of the time though, we don't wanna add more space. We want to keep working on reducing. So. A lot of times what I do is I will limit the amount of items that I keep in my home by my container size. So when I select a container for items that I tend to gather too much of, such as some of my craft items, then that container is all that I allow myself to have of that type of item. So if I try to bring in, for example, a new craft item and that craft bin is full, then something has to go for the new one to come in. And limiting your quantities by the container size is really helpful. I also do those with socks. I love fun socks. So I have 
uh, two places that I store socks. I've got my active socks and I've got one container of socks that I swap out every once in a while. And that container, if it's full, I can't bring in anymore without letting go of some. So you can limit the number of items that you have in your closet or any area by the size of the container that you choose. And also when you are looking at the items that you're storing and figuring out the size of container that you need, this is also a good time to think about whether you need a container with a lid or with no lid. So here's some examples. All right. So here would be some examples of when you would want a lid versus when you would not want a lid. So a container with a lid, such as this one, is really good for items that you do not need to access very often. These are my winter sweaters, my favorite sweatshirts for winter. So I will not be accessing these again until winter. So having a lid is going to protect them. Plus, if you want to be able to stack additional containers on top of them, then having a lid is helpful because that way it can stack nicely without the top container falling into the bottom container. So those are two times that you would want lids is when you need to protect items that you will not be accessing often if you wanna stack containers on top of them. Now I do say, don't stack containers, too many containers on top of each other, then it becomes very difficult to get to the container you need. And if it's more active, such as under a bathroom sink, if you have eight containers on top of each other with different categories, it's going to be hard to get in and out of those. So clutter will probably accumulate from just putting off, putting things away in the right place. So with your containers, stack them maybe two or three high, not much more than that. But containers with lids and then for active items, for items that you use all the time or for items a lot of times in a younger child's room or somebody who might not be quite as interested in organizing, we like to do no lids to make it easy. So for example, this is a pajama bin and it's great, a great pajama bin for in the closet. I don't have to worry about them getting wrinkled so I don't have to fold them necessarily, but pajamas are something that I access once a day. So it's easier to do my laundry and throw them in there. It's easier to grab my pajamas at the end of the night. And then this way I can have a storage bin with no lid, nothing will be stacked on top of it. And it's a very active, container. I use these types of containers a lot of times for young children as well, because it's a lot more difficult for them to get lids on and off of. If you can have open lids or open bins, that will be so much easier. So that's, we're continuing, we're considering what we're going to store in it first when we're trying to choose a container. All right. Once you have considered what you need to store, next you're going to look at your space and measure how much space you really have to work with. Because, you know, even the perfect container, if it does not fit in the space that it needs to go into, it's not gonna help, correctly, correct? So a lot of times, instead of having a lot of space where you would stack multiple containers on top of each other, it's best to add another shelf. So you can have maybe one or two containers, shelf one or two containers again, and that way you can avoid having too many containers stacked on top of each other and making it cumbersome. So if you do measure your space and you find that you have a whole lot of space, consider adding a middle shelf. But also when you are looking at the space that you will be able to store these containers in, consider if there's anything within that space that would block a full container from sitting there. So here's an example of a time when it would be would block it. All right, so this right here is a photo from my closet. I have one of those additional shelves with those annoying support brackets and they go down diagonally. That means I cannot store a container in front of that bracket area. So when I am measuring and deciding on my containers for that area, what I'm going to make sure of is, let me see if I can find the other photo is that I choose bins that are the size that can fit in between those support brackets. So I made sure that I found containers that fit right in between the brackets. So I'm not wasting a lot of space. 
So always make sure if there's anything that might block your containers, make sure to measure and choose your containers based on that as well. It's so frustrating to get all of your containers home and realize they're just not going to fit as well as you would like. Now, sometimes you can find some additional sizes that will help those awkward spaces. So something like this bin is just from the dollar store and it's for things like magazines or file folders. It does not have the bar, but it was just a dollar. This is a great one for filling in if you have one of those shelves that have a strange uh, support bar or something like that. Finding thin, like skinny type of storage items are really helpful. So I love using, like this one is for hair accessories. I love using the tall skinny bins for things like that. Or you can even use something like just a magazine holder and you can store it facing one way if you want it to look pretty, if you want super easy access. This is an easy way to keep things like your hair accessories, like the hair tools, brushes and hair straighteners, things like that under a bathroom sink. But if you could also use something like this in a closet. But this is a nice way to have some narrow storage space, but easy access to the items. So think about how you can fill in and use up all of the space that you have available, even if parts of it are blocked. So you might find some skinny solutions. So now we've measured our space and we have measured what we need to store and we've considered how it will all fit, right? And if you have any questions, let me know in the chat area or if you have any aha moments or if you like something that I say, give it a heart or a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments so that way I know that this is helpful for you because the more you interact, the more I know what you like to hear. So next you want to consider what type of pr protection is needed for those items. So one example would be, we're back to clothes. Now this storage bin for my clothing is fabric. That's because here in Florida, especially, but anywhere, if humidity gets in to your storage bin and it can't get back out, it's not breathable, then it will start to eat away at the fabrics of your clothes. So you don't want long-term storage that can't breathe in somewhere like a closet if you're storing fabrics, things like that. Now, if I'm storing something in say an attic or a garage, then I'm more likely to need plastic storage because I want to protect it from elements like the pests and extreme water damage that could happen if something flooded. So in that case, I might look for plastic storage or if I was storing something underneath the bathroom sink, I'd probably go more for plastic. But for fabrics, if you're storing clothing and you're storing it inside an area that you don't need to worry about any type of water leaks or things like that, Fabric is going to be best because it's breathable, so humidity can get in and back out and protect your fabrics longer. Now, one of my other tricks for this is for hanging clothes. This is not really about containers, but it follows that whole fabrics, <laughs> um, using fabrics instead of using plastics. But for hanging clothes, also try to do fabric covers if you're covering up your nice clothes. So like this is a really nice dress that I have. It's kind of hard to see, but I've got the fancy dress is in here. And this right here, I take it out of any dry cleaning bags. Don't store the, your clothes in dry cleaning bags. They're holding moisture in against the fabric and your fabric will degrade faster. But this is just a king size pillowcase. You don't have to have king size, you can use regular size as well. But I reuse the old pillowcases as clothing covers, which is a nice easy way to recycle your old pillowcases and give them new life and protect your clothes. So basically, if you have a pillowcase, you're just going to take scissors and along the seam, the, the not open side, you'll just cut a little slit, one little slit. And that way, that's where your hanger can fit through and you're just going to feed it right over the clothing. So it makes your own clothing cover um, and it's nice and easy. So there's a little quick trick for you. Really quickly in the comments, let's see. 
Sorry, I just had to block a user really quickly. Um, Janet said, asked a question. She says, wool, question mark. Can you fill me in a little bit more? I'm not quite sure what the question is, but I would love to answer that. Okay. Uh, Karen gave a heart. Thank you, Karen. Heart right back at you. I love it. Terry says, great idea, pillowcases. Yeah, it's we end up with so many extra pillowcases somehow, and it's a perfect way to use them. Okay, so considering what protection is needed, we can also consider along those lines how long you need to use the storage bins. So back to this example of this fabric bin. During the winter, I will be pulling out these clothes and I will not need to use the bin. So instead of having a storage bin, this empty storage bin that now I need to store somewhere and take up space, I do like to be able to use collapsible bins. So like this, which you can find um, on the store link in my online store. But this collapsible bin now, it fold down, folds down like this. So I can take out all my winter clothes, put them in piles for the winter so they're easier to access. And along the side of my closet, store all of the bins collapsed right there along the side. So I don't have to worry about storing empty storage bins. And these are nice and ready for whenever I am done with my winter clothes. And then I can just build them right back up, put my winter clothes right back in them. And it's super easy. So consider, are you going to be using the bins year round? When you're not using them, where will they live? Um, are they collapsible or do you have space where your empty bins can sit when they're not in use? All right, so really quickly, let's hop over and see. Oh, Janet says for moth problems. So for wool, yes, if you have wor if you worry about moth problems for wool items, then if you are using the pillowcase idea, generally they're gonna get to the pillowcase and not to the item inside. But what I would do is I would probably add either a ribbon or a clip at the bottom. So that way there is no opening for the moth to get through. So you can just kind of clip it over and put a clip chip, uh, one of those chip clips on it or some binder clips so that the bottom is not open. Um, but generally the moths won't really bother. You can even clip up the top if you wanted to, but they'll, they might try to bother the pillowcase, which is fine, but then they can't get to the clothes. Same with fabric bins. They'll generally go for the fabric bin but they won't get all the way through to the clothes in general. All right, so great question. So we talked about measuring the quantity of things that you need to store. How much space will that take up? We talked about measuring your space, where you're going to be able to store the containers. And we talked about what protection those items would need, which will help us decide if we need fabric or if we need plastic, all that good stuff. And then sometimes you can also look around and find existing storage space. So one really common example of that would be this right here is my suitcase, my large suitcase for when I travel. And within my large suitcase, I do what most people do. And I have my smaller suitcase. Now, within my smaller suitcase, I like to store a lot of my travel items. So, oops, sorry, wrong zipper. So, right within this small suitcase that lives inside the large suitcase, it's already going to take up that much space anyway. But inside, I have my vacuum, like rolling type of storage bags. And I have a lot of my common travel items. So whenever I'm ready to go on a trip, it's already half packed for me. It's already got all of the different things that I'm planning to bring on my trip. And you'll notice that I have containers within containers. So these mesh types of containers, but a lot of these I have gotten from places like um, different makeup counters and they come with the free gifts but you can buy them as well. So you can see what's in each one, but these are great for categorizing 
your travel items so that way they can live in these little containers quick and easy to grab and when i'm ready for a trip my travel stuff's already there i don't need a separate bin you could also store things like winter items within your suitcases maybe all of your coats and scarves live in your suitcase um especially if you live in florida where that's pretty much <laughs> the only time that you're really going to use them too much is if you're traveling but you can store so many different things in existing storage space. If you have something that you have to keep anyways, and it's got a lot of storage space in it, find something that kind of makes sense in your brain to store there and keep it there. You can also, with your travel items, just as a heads up, store your packing list right inside with your travel items. And you don't have to worry about trying to find that when it's time to pack too. So... Using existing storage space is really helpful. Uh, in a kitchen, this would work, for example, if you have a food processor and it's a large food processor, it's got that huge empty area, maybe inside that empty area, you can store small kitchen tools or a KitchenAid mixer inside that big bowl. Maybe in there, you can store extra kitchen tools. Um, just think about what's got extra space in it in the area and use that extra space. So most of us have luggage using the inside of the luggage. Otherwise it's just wasted space. So use that inside of the luggage. Karen says, I have my travel items in zipper bags in my travel bag. And yes, I have a packing list. That's awesome. Yes, I love zipper bags too. Those are great. All right, so along with our container thoughts, pretty containers for insight storage. So what I mean by this is sometimes we might not have enough storage in our closets or maybe that's not a convenient place for some things. So finding pretty containers that you can actually put on display on shelves and in around your home, that's a great way to add more storage, right? So here's one example. This little box that I got from the local craft store inside is a lot of the stuff that I keep on my nightstand. So instead of junking up my nightstand drawer, I have this little box on the top of my nightstand. Super easy to get to the things that I use all of the time right next to my bed. So that just added a lot of storage to that area. You could do that for even like your nighttime routine if you have moisturizers and cleansers, all of your nighttime things could be in one storage bin. Or this one, this one actually sits on one of my shelves in my home. And it's just a cute little box and inside is memorabilia. So whenever I need to add more memorabilia, super easy, open it up, put in whatever memorabilia I want to save. And then when it gets full, it gets dealt with. But until then I can store this in plain sight because it's pretty and um, add that much more space instead of taking up closet space for it. So having pretty bins, uh, insight for storage for things like memorabilia, night nighttime items for your nightstand. It could also be used around other areas of your home. Maybe your end table next to the couch has pet grooming items so you can clip their nails while you're watching TV. Or maybe you have a pretty box somewhere in your home with pens and scissors and those common things that you use all the time so that way they're easy to grab. You can add these decorative storage boxes to places that are simply... Um, easy to access. Uh, if you need to keep something in an area, you don't have the storage. Add a pretty bin, put the items in there, and then they'll be in the right area. So in a closet, these types of bins are really good for um, shoe maintenance, you know, shoe care items, or laundry care items, or extra buttons and different parts that you want to keep for your laundry on your clothing. So adding a decorative box either in your closet or near your closet can be really helpful. And then finally, label, <laughs> label your stuff. When you label things, then that sets a clear intention for what goes in that drawer or that bin or on that shelf. So the more you label, then your intentions are going to be clear and it's less likely to have other types of items show up because you're super clear. This is the shelf for sweaters. This is the drawer for lingerie. This is the bin for favorite sweaters. But when you label your bin, it makes it a lot easier because then it's intentional. 
And then your brain does not have to try to remember what's in the bin. So that makes it so much easier as well. And some of the things that I like to do when I have bins like these. So of course, let's start with this. So you can add nice looking labels, like from a label maker, like I have with my favorite sweatshirts. And of course they have different styles that you can do with these label makers. You can have fun fonts. You can use different colored label tape. I generally try to just stick to the one black and white or black and clear label tapes. Those are the only ones that I use. So that way I don't have to store a bunch of different color label tapes. <laughs> but grabbing yourself a good label maker is really going to be helpful for making sure that they're nice and clear and easy. Another alternative, you can make your own pretty labels if you wanted to. Like this is actually um, chalkboard sticker. And I took a hole punch or a, like a craft punch and I made it a pretty shape. So I took my craft punch and I made a bunch of these different stickers on chalkboard stickers. So I can erase this whenever I decide to use this bin for something else and rewrite it with a chalkboard pen. But that's an easy way to make your own type of label. If you don't want the, either don't have a label maker, don't want a label maker, something like that. So you can make your own pretty labels or you can even just do temporary labels. So painter's tape, masking tape, whatever works for you, temporary labels until your brain knows exactly what's where is really helpful. And sometimes I find that I don't remember what's in some of these storage bins, especially on the top shelves, because I might not be able to see the label very well or you know, the label can't list everything that's inside. So I forget what's in there. And for me on the side of my closet in the top, on the top shelf, I have a bin of special clothing items. And I took a picture of the different items that are in the bin. So that way I can remember what's in that bin on the top. And then I just taped it to the side of my closet with painter's tape, but on the side of my closet, when I look up at that bin, I don't have to try to remember what else in the bin because I have the picture of exactly what's in the bin so I can find it when I need it and I won't wonder what's in it, especially since I have to get out a step tool to get to it. So using reference photos as sort of um, additional information along with your labels or um, using reference photos along the side in that area is helpful. You can even this out of the way. You can even take a picture of some of your items if you wanted to, like I did with this one, and put it in the front of your bin if that's helpful. I do that sometimes with people who want to store their shoes in those clear shoe bins, clear protected bins, then take a picture of the pair of shoes and put it on the inside of the bin or tape it to the outside of the bin so you can clearly see which pair of shoes that is. <clears throat> but labeling your bins is just going to save you a lot of mental energy and time. Terry says, love the nightstand idea too. Awesome. Yeah, it's, it's so much easier than trying to find something in a huge drawer because these are little things that would get lost there. Karen says, I use pictures for my child care bins. Yes, pictures are perfect with kids too. So you could laminate a picture or put it on the inside of the bin or draw a picture. Absolutely. Janice says, I so need reference labels. I love my reference labels. Absolutely. So tell me in the comments, what storage are you planning to add this week during Rock Your Closet? And how's it going? Are you enjoying the challenge? I would love to hear if you like this challenge. So let's do a recap while you let me know how you're doing with the challenge, if you're enjoying it, where you want to add more storage. Let's recap what we talked about. So this, again, is day four. We're talking about containers and storage. And it's for the Rock Your Closet Challenge through the 12th, which is Sunday. We talked about measuring what you need to store, what quantity of items, how much space will it take up. We talked about measuring the space that you have available for the containers. So you can make sure to find containers that will fill up the space reasonably well and um, not have anything blocking the way. We talked about considering what type of protection is needed for your items. So 
Does it need to be in a plastic container because there's a risk of flooding or outside it's going to be stored outside? Or is it fabric and it should probably be in a fabric container to protect from moisture eating away at the fabrics? We talked about using existing storage space. The common example is luggage. Inside your luggage, definitely store extra things, whether they're travel items, sweaters, blankets, something like that, but use that space that would otherwise be wasted. We talked about using pretty containers to add more storage to your home without it looking like there's more storage, such as the pretty container on a nightstand for all your little night items. And finally, we talked about labeling, creating labels for your containers so it's easier for you to remember what's in them, so you don't have other types of things creeping in that should not be there, and um, so it's just going to look nice overall. All right. So really quickly in the comments, I see Janet says, I'm just starting the challenge. Perfect. Yay. I'm so glad. And the nice thing with this challenge, if you've registered, then you're going to have that challenge checklist. So you can repeat the challenge anytime. You'll have the tasks written down. And as far as the um, videos for this challenge, they will be available through June 19th. So you still have one whole extra week to be able to access this video and the other videos from the challenge and get caught up if you are not completely caught up so far. And it's okay if you're not completely caught up because we've got the weekend coming up. There's gonna be plenty of time to work it on the weekend. You'll have the videos for an extra week if you need to. Just remember to only focus on the little steps that you're working on for your current day and don't worry about the rest. One small step at a time and you're gonna get through this whole thing and you're gonna be so excited. I love it. Terry says, I'm a bit behind, but getting great ideas. Fantastic. Hopefully this is motivating you and exciting you. Sue says, I've made more progress this week than I've done in a long time. The donation box is filling up. Yay. Woo, woo, woo. I love it. That's awesome, Sue. I'm so proud of you. Terry says, yay. Yes. I'm so excited. I love that. Well, if you've not already registered, so you can get your challenge checklist and you can get the remaining tasks emailed to you make sure to register. You can go to SusannaK.com, click on the banner at the very top of the website, or choose the link that is in the description of the show. And um, yeah, and get registered so you can get that challenge checklist. Also remember any products that I mentioned that you might be interested in learning more about, they're at SusannaK.com in the store link under my favorite things. And I wanted to announce that Starting tomorrow, Friday, June 10th, we have a three-day sale. Wait, four-day sale. 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, four-day sale. So we've got a four-day sale for our webinar vault. So if there are any webinars that you've missed that I did in the past and you wanted to grab the replay, right now, uh, starting tomorrow, Friday the 10th through Monday the 13th, I will be opening up the replays for purchase again at a discount. So they're all going to be $5 off the normal $30 price. So you'll see there'll be $25 in the store. You'll go to SusannaK.com and choose the store link starting tomorrow through Monday. After Monday, they're going back in the vault and you won't have access to them anymore. Some of them I might not ever do again. Um, I don't know what I'm doing next year, but there are some that are being discontinued. So if you've not gotten all the webinars, make sure uh, stop by the webinar vault sale starting on Friday and grab any that you missed because you can download them and own them. And uh, there's no limit to the time that you have to watch them once you download them. I will also try to put together a checklist of all the webinars that I've done that will be in this vault sale. So that way you can keep track of which webinars you've already got, which ones you still want, and just, yeah, hopefully that helps. All right. So Karen says, thank you, Suzanne. Oh, you're so welcome, Karen. I love having you here. Absolutely. Uh, someone from Facebook says, think about recycle items using large, clear containers that lettuce comes in, etc." Yes. If you can find a container that's already coming into your home that would be recycled or thrown out anyways, it's great to repurpose those. Just make sure that it fits your needs. So a lot of times if we're trying to make the our needs fit the container, 
then it makes it a little bit difficult to stay organized because it's not the right function of the container or it's not the right size. But I love repurposing containers. So if you can find a container that is the right size that would have been trash anyways or recycle, use that. Love, love, love it. Wendy says, so many good ideas, incorporating quite a few. Fantastic. And Sonia says, have a great weekend. I'm really motivated to redo my closet. Yes, yes, yes. And this weekend, remember, we'll be in the Facebook group. I'll have my videos posting for the, the closet challenge. So it's a great time to catch up on your closet. I cannot wait to see your after photos. Share them with me. All right. Email me or post them in the Facebook group. I love it. Well, thank you so much. Just like my shirt says, you've got this. See there. <laughs> I got this. You got this. You're doing absolutely amazing. And I'm so glad to have you with me. Keep it up and make today amazing, beautiful. I love you. <laughs> Bye-bye now.